In this video, I want to show you briefly how to build a truth table for any given compound statement. So the first thing you want to do is determine how many lines, that is, how many rows, horizontal rows, you're going to need in the truth table. So say you're trying to make a truth table for this compound statement, P or if Q, then R. First, you want to determine how many simple statements are in the compound statement. Now the simple statements are represented by the capital letters. So you wanna count up how many different capital letters are in this compound statement. And the answer here is three, because you've got P, Q, and R. Second, you wanna take the number two and raise two to, the power, to that power, in this case, to the, the, power, to the third power. So, Two times two times two equals eight. That is how many horizontal lines you're going to need in this truth table. Two raised to the power of however many simple statements there are. Okay, so on the top left-hand side of your table that you build, you're going to list each of the simple statements in the order in which they appear in the compound statement. And then on the right-hand side of the table, you're going to put the, the whole compound statement itself. So we've, we've got our eight rows here that we calculated. And then on the left-hand side, I've got each of the simple statements, P, Q, and R. And, and then on the right-hand side, I've got the whole compound statement. That's how you're going to set it up. Then you're going to fill in the truth values for the simple statements. So, Let's say you start with the simple statement column that's farthest to the right, but before you get to the compound statement. So in this case, it's R. What you want to do is fill in the truth tables and alternate true, false, true, false, true, false, all the way down. Then you go over to the left one column, in this case, under the Q column, and you do two trues and two falses, alternating. So true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then you go over to the next column to the left, P, and you do four trues and then four falses. And you basically keep following that pattern until you've gone all the way to the left and filled out the truth values for all the simple statements. Now, why do you do it this way? All this is is a, a standard schematism that makes sure that you captured all the possible combinations of truth values of the simple statements. And it locates them in the same place so that we can all, whenever we all refer to a truth value, we can say, hey, look at line four, and line four looks the same for all of us. Um, so, you know, if you had a fourth column, you'd be alternating every eight lines. You get like eight trues and then eight falses. Okay, so now you filled out the truth values for the simple statements. Now you're in a position to determine the truth values for the logical operators in the compound statement. So, you know, on this chart, I'm not filling in the truth values underneath each of the simple statements uh, in the compound statement area. Sometimes we do that, like in your homework, it'll, it'll take all the P truth values and it'll line them up here. Uh, and the same with Q and R, that's, that's fine, it's optional. It's really about whether it makes it easier for you to see uh, those, the truth values of the simple statements. But what we're really concerned about is the truth values of the logical operators at the end of the day. Okay, so which of the truth, which of the logical operators do we want to look at first? Well, we want to follow our order of operations and we want to get to the main operator last. We want to start the furthest inside the parentheses, if there are parentheses, if there are, because the, the farthest that we can go inside the parentheses, we want to capture the logical operators that range over only simple statements. That's where we want to start. The logical operators that are only referring to other simple statements. Now, if we, if we were to start with the wedge, the wedge is ranging over P, which is a simple statement, but it's also ranging over this other compound statement which is contained in the parentheses. But if we go inside the parentheses, the, the arrow is ranging over R, that's a simple statement, and Q, a simple statement. So that's where we wanna start. 
Okay, so uh, basically you, you look at Q and R, and you look at their truth values on each line, and you determine whether or not the arrow is true um, given those truth values. So the arrow is gonna be true uh, in every case except where the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. But in every other case, it's true. So we get, um, these are the truth values that we get. I'm gonna assume that you know how to generate the truth values for conditionals. And then we're gonna move to um, the next logical operator, which in this case is the main operator. Uh, and this gives us the truth values for the entire compound statement. So here's the wedge. And what we're looking at here is that we're comparing um, the truth, well, we're look, looking at the truth values for P, which are given to us here in this column, and the truth values for the, this entire compound statement, which are the ones we just came up with. So we're saying you know, the truth conditions for a disjunction for the wedge are at least one of the disjuncts has to be true. So if you on each line, we're going to look at P, we're going to look at the, the conditional column, and if at least one of those is true, then the wedge is true. So that's how you're going to use and fill out the uh, the truth table. And you know, with different compound statements, you might have a different number of logical operators. They can be indefinitely large. Um, so that is the basic story.